so far we've seen that if we consider a restricted domain between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, then the inverse sine function exists. Inverse sine x will have for its domain negative 1 and 1, x between negative 1 and 1, and y between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. For example, 1, we are asked to find the exact value of inverse sine 1, which means we are looking for an arc whose sine is 1. Looking at the unit circle, the point 0, 1 has a cosine of 0 and a sine of 1, and it represents the arc pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So our answer is pi over 2 or 90 degrees. For example, 2, we are looking for an arc whose sine is exactly negative 1 over 2. We can rewrite the question as the arc whose sine is negative 1 over 2. Now, from the reference triangle, we can find an arc whose sine is one half, located in the first quadrant, and that'll be our reference angle, pi over six. But in order to get negative one half, sine must be in the fourth quadrant, right? Sine must be in the fourth quadrant, therefore, we're going to go clockwise and get our angle. And our angle is going to be negative, negative pi over 6. Notice that it's coterminal to 11 pi over 6. But the correct way to express it is to say negative pi over 6. If x is between negative 1 and 1, then we can get the inverse sine of x. If it doesn't represent a special angle, we will use the calculator to get an approximation. The inverse sine of 1 third, using the calculator, make sure it's in radiant mode. Inverse sine is second function sine and 1 divided by 3 and then enter. So 0.3398, two decimal places, 0.3398 to two decimal places is approximately 0.34. Inverse sine one third is approximately 0.34. Inverse sine negative one fourth using the calculator will we will uh, we will get inverse sine negative make sure you press on the negative sign one fourth is approximately negative 25.26.8. Negative 0 0.25.26.8.0 to two decimal places. Inverse sine negative one fourth is approximately negative point 0.25. Inverse sine sine x is equal to x if x is largely between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, 2a. Sine of inverse sine x is equal to x if x is largely between negative 1 and 1 we have to consider the domain of the inner function. And if that inner function exists, then we'll be able to 
uh, find the composition because pi over 8 is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Sine pi over 8 will have an inverse. So inverse sine, sine pi over 8 will be pi over 8, 2a. Inverse sine, sine 5 pi over 8. 5 pi over 8 does not belong to the interval negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. 5 eighths is 0.625. And 0.625 pi belong to the second quadrant. Now we can find the reference angle. And how do we find that reference angle? It's going to be pi minus 5 pi over 8, which is really 8 pi, 8 pi over 8 minus 5 pi over 8. So the reference angle is 3 pi over 8, which is located in the first quadrant between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Therefore, we'll be able to uh, get the value of the inverse sine. So inverse sine, sine 5 pi over 8 will have the same value as 3 pi over 8. 